Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to weld up your own T4, T6, T3 divided turbo flange. And I've got a couple pieces of pipe here to help demonstrate. Overall the process is not very difficult at all. Once you guys figure out the basic steps, you guys are going to be able to knock this out no problem and do your own custom builds. This is the exact same method that I did when I built the turbo system on my 600 horsepower 1975 Dodge W100 as well as my freshly built 1973 Dodge Charger. The only tools you really need is a hammer, a grinder, and maybe a marker in case you want to draw some lines. So this right here is a divided T4 turbo flange. If you were going to be building like let's say a naturally aspirated vehicle, you would not be using this kind of flange. The flow for a naturally aspirated vehicle is not very good with a flange like this. Although the exhaust flow of the hot side of a turbo engine does not necessarily matter nearly as much as a naturally aspirated engine, it's still a good idea to size everything appropriately. You definitely don't want to go too small. I don't really think you can go too big on a turbo exhaust system, but I know for a fact that you can go too small. The first thing to do is to eyeball your flange. Like I said, this is a T4 divided flange, so it's got a very particular pattern on the size of the holes inside. If it was an open flange, you'd be able to run one big pipe but because we've got a divider flange this is set up to run two pipes the size of the pipe itself doesn't seem to matter nearly as much i've got an inch and seven eighths right here on the right hand side and a two and a quarter on the left hand side and as you guys can see here just slipping them into place i'm able to get both of these to run side by side next to each other without any concerns so if you're building your own exhaust system, just make sure you're calculating the size of the pipe that you're going to use and the rest is pretty much straightforward. So how do we go ahead and get these pipes to fit inside the flange? I'm going to break it down into three basic steps. The first step is obviously you're going to go ahead and take your pipe. Like I mentioned before, this is an inch and seven eighths pipe and I went ahead and I put it on my bench and I crushed it down to a size that was going to fit in between these two walls right here. You're going to go ahead and crush it one way, then you're going to turn it 90 degrees and and then try to smash it the other way what you're trying to do is you're trying to take that circle shape that we had and you're trying to turn it more into of a rectangle shape you're not going to turn it into a perfect rectangle that's going to be really difficult but as you smack it back and forth to either side the sides are going to start to straighten out a little bit and it'll start to resemble this hole the main thing that you have to focus on is that it fits in between these two sides right here. You don't have to worry about the long side, just worry about the short side. Once you have it crushed to a point where side to side it's going to fit in between these two walls, you're going to go ahead and take your divided flange and you're going to mark the individual holes in four different areas. Like I mentioned before, you're going to focus on the long side, so you're going to mark it in all four corners of the long side before it reaches the rounded part of the hole. Once you've taken those four marks that you've placed on the divided flange, you're going to go ahead and fit up that piece of pipe that you crushed and you're going to lay it over and try to center it as best as you can on top of the flange. You're going to take the same marks that you just marked on the flange and you're going to transfer those onto the pipe. Once you have those marks onto the pipe, you're going to go ahead and measure out about half the distance of the thickness of the flange and transfer it over to the short side of the pipe. Then you're going to go ahead and connect the two short sides together and you're going to cut off that section that you just marked out. After you're all done, you should have a section that kind of looks like this. It's going to have an uncut section in the middle and the two short sections are going to be trimmed. What this is going to allow you to do is that now that you know that the long sides will fit inside of the flange, and the short sides are no longer in the way, this piece of pipe should literally just drop in effortlessly and then you are good to go. If you guys look around, there are no gaps, it's all nice and tight. And the only thing you have to worry about now is to make sure your pipe is facing the right way and it's time to weld it up. In order to change the direction that the pipe is facing, you're going to focus on the short side that we just trimmed. For example, this two and a quarter inch pipe, I have it cut up at an angle. So that way when it sits inside the flange, it's going to sit at an angle, pointed away from it. If I fit up the other piece that I had that I set up to go straight, this side is going to go facing straight up and this side is gonna be pointed off to the left like so. If you wanted both pipes to face away from each other, you would cut this in the opposite diagonal so that way your finished product will end up looking like this. If you just turn the pipe and try to weld it up, it's gonna take you much longer to fill it in than it is to just cut it in the direction that it's supposed to be. 
It's much easier to just have it all clocked together as you're fitting it up. So that way, in case it comes apart, you could always just put it back together and it's facing in the exact same way. Before you actually get into welding though, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and deburr the inside of this pipe. If these little pieces right here break off and go right into your turbo, the turbine housing could be damaged and you're gonna be looking at rebuilding or replacing that whole turbo. So make sure you get everything nice and clean before you start welding this up. Welding this whole thing up is actually pretty easy. What you're going to avoid is welding it down here in the middle and I'm gonna show you why in a second. You're gonna to wanna to start at this corner and then weld all the way around toward the outside, all the way to the opposite corner right here. If you flip it around, you're gonna understand what we're trying to do. So when we weld on the outside, this whole pipe is completely sealed except from here to here. So when you flip it around, you're gonna to wanna to start your weld a little bit into your existing weld that you just did. And then you're gonna to wanna to cross to the other side, welding this little tab onto the flange. And then you're going to just run all the way to the other side and meet up with the weld that you just did on the outside. If you don't wanna weld the outside, you can just weld on the inside by itself. But I personally like to weld the outside and the inside as much as possible, just to give it a little bit more strength. Another tip that I wanna give you guys is that if you're building a system where two different sides are meeting together, completely build one side and weld this all the way through. Once you have one side complete, the chance of it moving or warping from where you have it is much less than if you were to weld both sides at the same time. Every time you weld something, it'll tend to pull toward that side. But if you finish up one complete side and then go ahead and run the other side to it and then finish the second side, you're gonna see that it's much less likely for to warp because you've got a lot of leverage pulling against it from the side you already did. Like everything, the most important part is a prep, so make sure your gaps are nice and tight, so that way you will be 100% confident in the quality of your welds when you put this together. So I'm not gonna be welding this flange up personally because I'm gonna be using it for something else, but if you guys have any questions, go ahead and post them down below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.